Hi, and welcome to Prepping Essentials. I've mentioned elderberries a couple of times in uh, recent videos, as uh, a lot of them are starting to ripen now on the uh, trees down on the land. But it's a bit of a, uh, a battle as to know when to take them, because if you leave them too long, the birds will have them. If you take them too early, they'll not be no good for making stuff. So I'm just going to have a run round and see if I can't gather enough to do something with them. So let's find out. Well, I've been on the, uh, the land picking elderberries. Got a, a big bag, so I now need to get those individual berries off. And to do that, <laughs> it's not as easy as you might think. Long-term viewers will have seen this in a previous video, God, more than a year ago, where I just used a fork to scrape the berries off. It is fiddly. Let's get the rubbish bin a little bit closer, because I am going to fill this up. But bit of therapy for you, spend a little bit of time taking these berries off. I've not come across an easier way of doing this. So for the next, God knows how long, half an hour I guess, <laughs> given the amount of berries I've got, this is what I'll be doing. So rather than you watch the painful process try not to get the green ones I haven't got that many green ones but there will be the odd one or two here and there yeah so rather than watch me doing this for the next half hour I'll come back to you once I've finished emptying this big bag Wish me luck. Well, that's a really messy job, but we've got quite a lot of berries there. So invariably you do end up with little stalks in there, which you really want to try and get out. So I'll just pick through here. Generally, anything that's on the surface is where you find the ones that aren't really ripe. So you get lots of these little green ones and red rather than black. So it's a bit fiddly, but try and sift through as much as you can. I mean, certainly you don't want foliage like that in there. <laughs> <laughs> but generally the stuff that's on the top is stuff you don't really want the floating stuff so just scoop through and pick it out You are going to lose some ripe ones by doing this. But honestly, having done this before, if you try to go through, you end up almost one by one agonising over it, whether it's ripe enough or whether it's not ripe enough. And... Uh, this is already labour intensive. 
So don't put yourself through that agony. <laughs> Just have a scoop because generally if it's floating, it's floating for a reason. And that reason generally is that it's not ready. Anyway, let me uh, get cracking with this. And uh, once I'm sure that it's, that it's all been cleaned thoroughly and I've got as much of the debris out as possible, I'll come back to you. Okay, that's our first pass. So I'm going to pop this into this sieve and then we'll see what we've got. And that's what we've got. There's still a little bit of sieving to be done. Just to pick through as careful as you are, you do end up still with little bits of branch. So I'll gradually pick my way through this. Nobody said it was easy <laughs> or quick, but if you're going to do it, you may as well try and do it properly. But to be fair, that's not too bad. I managed to get most of the green ones out, which I'm stunned at. That's actually not looking too bad now. I don't think you'll ever get every single little tiny piece. As long as you get the bulk of it out. Some really nice berries in here. Oh, you could spend literally hour after hour going through this. I'm assuming you can see this on the video. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. 
a couple more little stalks there. I think we're about done. So what have we got to make our jam? Well, we've got a kilo of just ordinary granulated sugar. We've actually got 1.1 kilos. I went slightly over, but I'm not worried. <laughs> it's not an exact science. None of my stuff is. 1.1 kilos of washed and uh, well, we say processed. I've picked the berries off the stalks. 1.1 kilos of elderberries. I've got a jar of pectin. We're going to be using between six to eight grams of that as a setting agent to make the actual jam or jelly, whichever you prefer, uh, to, to set. And then we've just got a little bit of lemon juice. I'll be using about a tablespoon of uh, lemon juice. So that's our ingredients. Um, all I need to do now is turn the camera around so you can see what goes in the pot and when, and we'll get cooking with it. So first things first, I've popped the stove on. Let's just get rid of that lid. I've got 100 grams, it's like half a glass of water. Really all that's for is to stop the berries sticking to the bottom of the pan when I uh, start heating them up. Now this is going to be tricky. <laughs> Let me do that over here out the way. wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be to be fair. Not at all. Okay so that can go on to the heat. You know me by now I like to keep as tidy as I can while I'm doing this because there's enough opportunity later for mess. So there's the rest of our ingredients, the lemon juice, the pectin and the sugar. Don't need that glass. I've got myself a potato masher and all I'm going to do is just spend a few minutes while that pan's heating up, just squashing the elderberries. Now it depends if you want to make jam or jelly to be fair. Um, the issue I have is that elderberries, a little bit like blackberries, have quite hard seeds in them that can get in the gaps of your teeth and just generally be a complete pain. So rather than jam, I'll be making jelly. So I'll be trying to extract all of the seeds or as much as I can so that I don't have that issue. If you prefer your fruit as fruit whole, um, then don't do this bit. Don't, don't squash it as I'm doing. I'm just getting a bit fussy, the old ragette. <laughs> I can't be doing with trying to get seeds out of my teeth. <laughs> anyway, so... As I say, while this is heating up, I'm just going to spend a bit of time squashing these down and uh, we're going to actually bring this up to the boil and let it sort of simmer away for about 15 to 20 minutes. So rather than watch me doing this, I'll bring you back once we've got it up to temperature. Okay, so that's come up to the boil. And all I'm doing is just swirling it around to make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. And I'm just gonna time it now for about, mm, let's say 10 minutes or so. I'll just turn it down to more of a 
a simmer, a strong simmer than an actual boil. Uh, just keep stirring away. I've got myself ready a, uh, a bowl and a sieve because I'm going to be straining this liquid off. So I've got myself just a little bit of uh, it's almost cheesecloth type material just to uh, line the bottom of that and hopefully that will strain through nicely rather tr than trying to get it through one of those mesh filters. So I'll let this simmer away, quite a high simmer, it's almost a boil, for the next 10 minutes and then I'll let it cool down just to uh, sieve through. So I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, those uh, elderberries have been on that low boil, high simmer, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> for just slightly over 10 minutes now. Um, so I'm going to turn the heat off and let those just cool down. I uh, changed my mind about that sieve. I've got the metal sieve out and popped the cloth in. I just wanted to keep it off the, uh, the base of this bowl. Um, if you're wondering what that spoon's doing there, it's to stop that sieve sliding off when I actually start pouring. I don't want it dropping in to the liquid. So we'll just get this to cool down and then we'll get it poured in. Okay, well that's just been left to cool down for 10-15 minutes. Got to get this into uh, the sieve now. So, here we go, that's quite warm. <laughs> Let me just grab a, something to hold that with. That's better. Now, this could be interesting. Let's see if we can get this in without too much of a disaster. And the idea is we just let that slowly drain its way through. Um, you can't really squash it through the sieve because if you do that, there is a chance you'll get bits dropping through with it. And then your jam or your jelly, whichever it is you're making, uh, will be cloudy. And I would like it to be as clear or transparent as I can get it. So that's the pan sorted out. Let's just leave that now to slowly drain its way through. Not quite sure how much liquid I'm going to end up with out of that. But time will tell. So I'll just push that over there and just leave it to do its thing. I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe more, I don't know. Okay, we're back. I uh, strained the uh, elderberry berries and I've ended up with just slightly over half a litre, 500 ml of juice. Obviously the, uh, the pulp that was left over I've got rid of that. So that's going into the pan. So because we've got 500 ml of juice, I've measured out 500 grams of sugar and that's going straight in. I've got my lemon juice, I've measured that out tablespoon that's going in so now we're just going to give that a quick stir around get the heat back on and as it's warming up I'll slowly dissolve that once that's up to temperature I'll come back to you 
apologies for the noise, I'm boiling up the kettle um, so I can sterilise my jars. So now it's up to temperature, a bit of a rolling boil, if you can see it on here or not. Yeah, I think maybe you can. It's uh, quite a fierce boil. I'll do that for the next 10 minutes and then we'll be in a position to get it poured into the jars. So I'll come back to you shortly. Well, we're in the final stages, so uh, I'm going to have to get a move on now. That's uh, quite a fierce boil on that. I look at it and see it uh, boiling away and think it's going to overflow. It, it isn't, but it just looks like it might. Um, so let's get this, these jars out. I've got a couple of small jars just to give away to friends and family and then I don't know how much I'll get out of this in terms of jars but hopefully I'll get at least one of these can you hear that <laughs> it does make me nervous there's one thing about this elderberry, you have to bear in mind, it will stain terribly. Um, so please do be careful what you're doing. If you've got anything that you don't want staining, keep it well away. I don't mind sacrificing the odd towel or dishcloth. Um, but I know some people when they're in the kitchen, they uh, they have white. That's fatal if you put white on. <laughs> right, let me get rid of that. I'll use that for my washing up. So I think we're about there. I've got my funnel at the ready. Let's uh, get this show on the road and get these jars filled up. heat off. It really is brimming and frothing. <laughs> okay. Now the moment of truth. I need to uh, and get this in the jars without making a complete mess of everything. Let me just get a, a towel for that because that's going to be rather hot. Okay, here we go. I'm getting as close to the top as I can of these jars. Yeah, I don't think I'll get those two big ones done. No chance. There's two little ones. Will we get one big jar? Here we have. Now, what to do with the tiny bit that's left? <laughs> Be a shame to put that in another jar. Let me just top it up slightly. I can maybe get this into all of these three. Yeah, I think you can.
Excellent. Okay, let me uh, quickly tidy up. I thought that I'd gone on the wood then for a second. I was just about to freak out. <laughs> let me get these tidied up and I'll show you what we've got. So that half litre of juice has uh, just nicely filled those two small jars and that, uh, that one medium sized jar. So we'll let those get cooled down and then uh, perhaps later on I'll uh, get a little bit of bread and butter out and we'll uh, see what it's like when it's cooled down. Well, the proof of the pudding, they say, is in the eating, so... Let's have this out. And let's test a little bit out on this uh, nice bit of fresh bread. Oh, look, I'm making a mess now. More haste, less speed. <laughs> Mmm, okay. What do you think? It certainly tastes nice. Well, that's the elderberry jam from the little woodland on my uh, land. Very, very sweet and tasty. Bon appetit. Well, that's it for another video on cooking with your preps. Um, foraged elderberries from the woodland. Free food. Why not give it a go? Have you got any recipes for uh, cooking with your preps or for uh, foraged food? Let us all know in the comments section below. But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.